Well guys, um, as you can see behind me here, the car's all loaded up and we're heading on another session. Um, I've got 24 hours ahead of me. And the purpose of this video is gonna to be to talk about planning your winter campaign. Uh, we're well into the autumn now, sort of mid-November. So winter's just around the corner and we've had a few frosts already, so we're definitely sort of heading that way. And I uh, just wanted to sort of run you through my thought process, um, you know, choosing a water, um, baiting tactics, choosing spots, um, rigs, you know, the whole lot really. So, so yeah, stay tuned. We're going to, um, we're going to head to the lake now and when we get there, um, I'll, I'll get set up and then I'll talk to you a little bit more about what we're doing on this session. And then later in the video, we'll talk about planning a winter campaign. So yeah, for now, enjoy the ride and, uh, yeah, I'll catch you in a minute. Hey guys, welcome to my channel, um, or if, if you're already subscribed, uh, welcome back. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. We've got lots of videos coming up over the winter and a competition around Christmas time, so you're not going to want to miss that. Um, I like to do big time videos, um, vlogs of my sessions, but also I'll include tips and advice along the way. So hopefully you can learn something by watching my videos and um, yeah, hopefully I've got a fish or two to show you. Uh, coming up over the winter. So yeah, keep watching for the rest of the video. Um, we're going to be talking about planning a winter campaign and all the things you need to know such as spot choice, bait choices, rigs and tactics and uh, even you know choosing the right lake. So stay tuned for that and we'll get into the rest of the video. Alright guys, well here we are. Um, we made it down the lake and I'm just taking advantage of um, a break in the weather really since I got here sort of put everything up, you know, set up the bivy and everything and literally the heavens opened and we've had hail and rain and, you know, wind and it's been sort of pretty uh, apocalyptic, if you like. Um, so I've not really been able to get the camera out and chat to you, but um, yeah, it's about 20 past two now. Um, probably been here about three hours and uh, finally the rain sort of cleared enough that I can talk to you guys. So. Um, so here we are, we're down at the day ticket lake. Um, if you've seen some of my previous videos, I've, I've done a couple of videos here and actually my first ever video back in February was filmed here in this exact swim actually. Um, I'm starting to think about, you know, planning my winter campaign and as I did so well on here last year, I'm kind of considering coming here. But I do have a couple of other waters that I'm uh, looking at and I'm, I'm probably gonna fish between the three and see where is fishing best. And then, uh, you know, kind of stick with one once I've kind of settled into it, if you like. But for now, we're, we're on the day ticket lake and we've got 24 hours ahead of us. Um, I got here, had a bit of a walk around, didn't really see an awful lot, as you don't really this time of year. You know, it's cooler now, the water's below 10 degrees. Fish have gone a little bit more dormant and um, they're only active for short periods. so. It's quite hard to see them show themselves and things so it's, it's difficult to know where to go when you arrive at the lake but um, I've gone in a swim that I know has got kind of cold water form and the wind is due to pick up and blow down this end as well so you know a couple of good reasons for going in this swim and um, you know it's near the car park so that's handy. <laughs> um, okay the rain's just coming back in now so I'd better cut this short, but um, we've got three rods out, we're fishing, and I'm gonna keep updating you as the session progresses, 
hopefully if there's any fish to show you I'll show you those and um, as I said in the intro before we're going to um, talk about planning a winter campaign and all the all the different things to consider when you uh, undertake a campaign in the winter so stay tuned guys hopefully we've got some fish to show you and if not then um, hopefully you can learn something from uh, what I've got to say so um, so yeah I'm gonna stick the kettle on try and warm up a bit and yeah I'll catch you guys a little bit later on So uh, tactics on this session, I'm using my half snowman rig, um, if you look on my channel there's a video that's my tweaked blowback rig, it's basically it's that um, I'm using a 50mm S-Core bottom bait with half a pop-up on the top just to give it a bit of buoyancy, uh, take away the weight of the hook and then I've got an oval rig ring on the shank there. Um, and a chod style hook quite unusually uh, if you look at that blowback video i told you about you'll see why i use that um, and a bit of shrink tube which is tied line to line of style and a couple of blobs of putty on some strippable coated braid um, and i'm putting that out with a little uh, a little stick of my winter stick mix um, so I'll show you how I attach that now. Um, so yeah, got my little little stick mix there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to hook that over the point, go around the back of the shank, and go back over the point again like that. There we go. And that just stops the um, the hook bait from wrapping around the shank it helps the rig to lay out flat and also adds a little bit of attraction around your hook bait for when Mr. Carp turns up so um, yeah I'm going to get this out in the lake now and leave it out there for the night and hopefully something will come along and um, I'll have a fish to show you Well guys, as you can see, we're losing the light now. I think it's about half past four, getting on five o'clock. And as it's November, you know, it's getting dark quite early. I just had a nightmare with the geese. They, um, they tend to live on the stock lake up there during the day and then they come down for the night. I was just sort of uh, having a wander up the bank there to see if I could see any signs of fish. And I turned around and all the geese were in my swim and uh, I've got my rods sort of in the swim where they go in the lake so um, as soon as I got anywhere near they all kind of panicked and, and flapped and went through my rods so um, oh yeah I've just looked down there uh, yeah just managed to get all three rods back out um, had to redo all of them because I was worried it might have moved the leads you know and with with leaves on the bottom and stuff at the moment you don't want your leads getting dragged along I've just had an apocalyptic storm again all hail like proper big pea-sized hailstones coming down uh, so I got a bit of a soaking as well when I was trying to redo the rods so that was fun <laughs> but uh, I'm loving being out um, you know it's nice to be out on the bank this time of year not many people around if you look at the sky behind me there we've got gorgeous sort of uh, pink tinge to the clouds as that storm's just gone over and uh, yeah if you look around this way you've got even more sort of dark clouds coming so good chance of another storm in a minute and it's going to be too dark for filming so yeah if I don't have a fish that'll probably be it for today I'm gonna to have some dinner now I've got some curry so that'll be nice um, but yeah we'll uh, update you if anything happens but if not then um, I'll see you in the morning Thank you. 
right spot. Um, we've uh, we've managed to land one. Well, hey, um, I've got it in the net, so I'll um, I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, it looks to be getting on for twenty pound, if not a little bit over one of the stockies. But yeah, well happy. Um, literally, sort of half an hour after I last spoke to you, it's just got dark. I was just watching some lightning over in the distance, thinking uh, I better batten down the hatches for the night. And uh, yeah, my rod that I recast after the geese wiped me out um, has gone off. Uh, it's literally only been out there, I don't know, less than an hour or something. So well happy with that. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll show you it in the net and then we'll get it out on the mat and we'll have a proper look and uh, I'll weigh it and let you know the weight and everything. So uh, awesome, well happy. Right guys, there she is. Um, nice and wide looking. Absolutely over the moon to have got one so early into the session. We've still got the whole night to go, so this may be the only one, but who knows? There might be um, a few more on the cards. So let's get this one out and have a look at him on the mat, and I'll I'll find out how much he weighs for you. Well, guys, here it is. A lovely fish, I'm sure you'll agree. 24 pound, 10 ounces. Caught on my half snowman rig that I've shown you. With um, with my stick mix that you'll see in a, an upcoming video. And um, yeah, that all important S core hook bait. So I'm absolutely buzzing with this one. <laughs> I've had a tough couple of weeks really. I've only caught one fish in the last sort of three sessions. And um, yeah, to get off the mark this early into this session, I'm absolutely buzzing. And it's nice to have one to show you guys as well. Um, so my decision of winter water may have been made for me, although uh, I'm not gonna rest on my levels and uh, I'm gonna fish around a few other places. But yeah, certainly a good start to the winter campaign. Although it is only November, so still technically autumn. But yeah, well happy with that. Uh, I'll just flip him around and show you the other side. Here he is then, one of the stockies, as I said, but uh, buzzing to get one and uh, 24.10, so that's the second 24 pounder I've had in uh, in two weeks, so yeah, happy with that. It's only been about an hour since I recast after the geese wiped me out, so obviously it was just, you know, the light faded and that was it, the fish went on the feed, so hopefully there's a couple more to show you, but we'll see, I'll get him back. And uh, if there's no more fish, I'll see you in the morning. Well, guys, uh, me again. <laughs> um, yeah, we've managed to bag another one, so I'm absolutely buzzing about that. Um, looks bigger than the last one, maybe 30 pounds, I'm not 100% sure. So I'll, um, I'll get it out, I'll unhook it, and I'll weigh it for you, and then I'll speak to you when I'm all sorted. Um, and yeah, absolutely buzzing. That's fish number two. Still got the rest of the night to go, so who knows what we're going to get. Well guys, here we go then, second fish of the night, uh, just gone 9 o'clock when I hooked it, and it's bigger than the last one as I said, here we go, there we go, and this one went £27.12 and actually um, I took this on a, a withy pool rig with a pop up, um, I wound in one of my rods and there was quite a lot of weed and leaves on the rig, so I thought I'd do a pop-up, you know, just to present over the top of that in the same area. And it's gone uh, pretty quickly after chucking it out with a little stringer. Um, if you see my With The Pool Rig video, you'll see how I do my exploding PVA stringer. Um, and that's exactly what I did to catch this one. So yeah, well happy, nice and scaly one this one. Um, I believe it's one of the stockies, but they're really packing on the weight now. And I don't doubt this will be 30 pounds by the spring. So yeah, happy days. I'll, uh, I'll just spin it around and show you the other side and better get it back, hey? Awesome. <laughs> so there we go. 27 pounds, 12 ounces. Absolutely made up with this one. I thought it might go 30, but not quite, but you know, it surely will be a 30 by the spring. Um, 
yeah, I'll get this one back and if I don't have another fish, I'll speak to you in the morning about planning your winter um, campaigns and hopefully I manage to get a bit of sleep between now and then uh, but I am absolutely buzzing so I'll probably be up all night just uh, enjoying it <laughs> so yeah one final look 27 12 morning guys um, quite a night in the end uh, no more fish after that 27 that I showed you but you know I'm not greedy um, I'm mid 20 and an upper 20 in a night at this time of year you know is, is good I think and, and I'm actually quite surprised you know it's been sort of cold the weather's been up and down I thought the fish would be sort of on edge and I thought I'd be scratching for a bite really but um, but yeah sort of a little uh, four hour window um, where I had those two fish and it's been quiet sort of either side of that so it just goes to show you that they can sort of just switch on and then switch off again so you know it makes me uh, realise that, that leaving the rods out and being patient is, is the best thing to do really um, got my uh, got my brew on I've <laughs> got my coffee on the go um, as you do to wake up in the morning managed to burn my fingers on the stove so that's carpy isn't it <laughs> um, yeah but um, yeah not an awful lot to tell you I didn't manage to get much sleep um, it kept raining heavy you know and the, uh, the sort of wind was off and on and there's a rat that lives around here it keeps coming running into my bivvy and keeps waking me up just as I'm dozing off you know so probably only got a couple of hours sleep if that really so I'm pretty knackered, but I'm not complaining, you know. I am um, quite used to not sleeping while I'm fishing. I don't know what it is, but I just can't switch off. I don't know about any of you guys. If you've got any tips for me um, for sleeping when you're fishing, you know, I, I'm always just anticipating a bite and every little noise will just wake me up. And yeah, I don't know whether I just need to get hammered or something. <laughs> but um, yeah, maybe let me know in the comments below if, if you've struggled with sleeping while you're fishing. It'd be interesting to know you know how everyone else sort of manages um, any any advice for me <laughs> but yeah I'm just gonna have my coffee as I said and um, yeah and then I'm gonna chat to you guys a little bit about how I go about planning my winter campaign I'm gonna go into venue choice and um, bait choice obviously and spot choice once you've chosen your lake and then sort of you know bait application and sort of choosing the right conditions and that sort of thing to try and have a successful winter campaign so stay tuned for that guys and then um, yeah we'll we'll be going home probably just before lunchtime so I haven't got that much time left to uh, to nick another bite but you know I'm really not complaining <laughs> So as promised, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about planning a winter campaign or at least my thought process and what I do to try and catch more fish in the winter. Um, so when I look back on my last two winters successful campaigns, there was something pretty uh, similar about both the waters that I chose and that was uh, fairly close to home. Um, if you choose a lake that's you know three hours drive away you're just not going to be connected with the lake you're not going to be able to pop in and bait up and and watch the water you know and find the fish and I think that's a big key to being successful in the winter is sort of spending time at the lake even when you're not fishing you know so if it's somewhere on the way to and from work or you know somewhere that you go past 
in your day to day life and it can be really handy to pop in for 5 or 10 minutes you know it doesn't take a lot of time but it is important to just keep popping in and visiting and trickling bait in if you can if you you know if you if you're able to afford it and you know there's not too many people fishing it so you're sort of annoying anyone it it can really pay dividends to sort of just keep a little bit of bait going in on the spots that you've chosen um, that brings me on to my next point really and that's spot choice um, so once you've chosen your lake um, you want somewhere sort of fairly shallow with a good stock and somewhere you know like I said that's quite close to home and then you want to choose a spot where you think the fish are going to hang out now you might have spoken to other people and they might have let you know the spots or you might use an edu educated guess um, what I do is try and find a fairly hard spot that's got silt all around it because I think in the winter fish spend a lot of time around the silt because it can generate a bit of warmth for them and also if there's any remaining natural food that will be hidden in the silt for them so if you can find a hard spot that's surrounded by silt then you're well on the way to finding a winter spot um, also look for areas that are warmed up by the sun so you might have one of these areas that I'm talking about with the silt but then a shallower area that gets the sun quite nearby as well and if you can find that it can be absolutely perfect um, and look for areas that are going to get a southwesterly wind because in the winter you're looking for you know a couple of warmer days and a bit of southwesterly wind can just blow that warmer surface water down towards where you're fishing so try and think about all these factors go on google earth you know find out which way the wind blows onto your spots check the weather every day I do in the winter you know make sure you know kind of what the weather's been doing leading up to your session and how it's going to change during your session you know air pressure is a big one if you get a drop in pressure usually you get a wind pick up um, you know it can be overcast and a bit rainy and those are really good winter conditions you know try and avoid those absolutely flat calm crisp frosty days where the sun's out you know doesn't really work. I mean a couple of days like that with the sun out and then a sort of overcast day, that can be the day to go when it when it goes overcast. So, you know, think about all those things. Um, and then as far as bait goes, um, all year round I use my my usual S-Core boilies. Um, so I don't change for the winter because that's a milk protein and bird food bait. So it's highly digestible all year round and the water temperature doesn't really affect its attractiveness or its digestibility so I always stick with my boilies but you know if you've got a bait that you're confident in and it's not a fish meal then stick with it by all means that should work for you um, but I also like to mix in some more kind of particle type baits but not actually you know hemp and that I mean sort of things like corn um, maize can be good and using lamb creek pellets which I've shown you in previous videos um, they're, a, they're a milk protein and cereal based pellet with molasses um, so they don't fill the fish up they're highly digestible they give them a bit of energy so you know it's giving them what they want in the winter um, a bit of vitamin is good you know you've got wheat and barley in there uh, and flaked maize as well all these sorts of things you should be thinking about in the winter rather than pellets and fish meals and you know that sort of stuff it's not really digestible for the fish and the cold water can congeal the oils and the fats in it making it you know not that attractive and, and not that good for the fish really so you just got to think about digestibility um, and also then attractiveness so I like to add liquids into my mix so I'll, I'll, um, I'm going to be doing a video on my winter spod mix so keep an eye out for that um, but I do like to put some liquids into there some molasses for a bit of sweetness um, and there's natural betaine in that as well which is an attractant for the carp and then I use the Richworth S-Core Serum which is an amino acid blend which is quite watery so it quickly leaks out into the lake bed and holds the fish in the swim for longer and it, it sort of it shows it, it makes the fish think there's food there even when there's not you know even if all the, the bait you've put out has been cleared the, um, the serum can still be in the lake bed 
and um, the fish can still sort of smell it and keep rooting around so it gives you more chance of a bite really. Um, I like to try and sort of attract the fish into the swim without giving them too many solid food particles to feed on you know and fill them up just I just want to attract them and then my hook bait and a, a few freebies you know just a handful of freebies is um, enough to sort of get them picking up baits you know um, I'm gonna have a video on my winter stick mix coming out and a way to bait up without you know overfeeding the fish so keep an eye out for that as well um, and yeah that's about it really you know I'll, I'll re recap over what we've talked about so you want a venue that's close to home fairly shallow with a good stock of fish uh, not too weedy as well uh, you want to choose a bait that you're confident in but also one that's highly digestible for the fish and the attractors work in, in the colder months as well so you need a bait with a, a winter track record really um, you want to visit the water regularly um, bait up if you can you know um, take a notebook with you polarized glasses binoculars that sort of thing and just keep watching the water climb up any trees if there are any and just find the fish you know because if you find the fish early in the winter campaign quite often they'll be there the whole winter and you know you can really reap the benefits so keep visiting the water speak to other anglers speak to the lake owners because often they're sort of feeding the fish through the winter because there's not many anglers on um, I used to work at Lake in Kent and they used to feed maize through the winter and that's valuable information you know if you turn up and you fish fish meal boilies sort of in the normal summer spots you're probably not going to do very well but if you find out they've been feeding maize in a margin somewhere where it's a bit deeper or something and the fish are coming on and eating the maize and you know you can really sort of empty the lake if you like if you sort of fish that area with a similar bait so that's worth thinking about as well and then um, you know planning your sessions around the weather if at all possible looking for the warmer conditions um, looking for those stormy conditions I think my best um, winter session was five fish in a night and that was 60 mile an hour winds you know sort of rain really stormy and horrible I didn't sleep but I don't care you know I was catching fish and um, you know it can really warm you up on a cold winter night if you're uh, if you're bagging a few fish so yeah I'm not going to go on for too long because I do have a tendency to ramble as you know <laughs> but um, hopefully there's a few ideas for you there as far as rigs go um, I wouldn't change anything you know people talk about fining down in the winter well I don't see the point you know the carp are still going to pick up your baits um, you might want to sort of shorten your rigs if you think the fish aren't moving very quickly um, and maybe add a bit of buoyancy if you're using bottom baits um, I like to tip off with half a pop up as I've said you know in previous videos just to give that a little bit of buoyancy but you know you could very well just fish a straight bottom bait out of the bag on your normal rigs and probably do just as well I think it's more about lake choice and bait and, and location on those lakes so they're your most important things and a good bait in the right place on a, on a decent rig will catch your fish. So yeah, if we don't catch anything else on this session, I'll, um, I'll leave it there. But thanks very much for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'm glad I had a couple of fish to show you. Um, you know, it's always good to be catching at this time of year and hopefully we can carry on through the winter. So make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos. As it's getting colder, you know, I'm going to need all the support I can get <laughs> going through the cold nights. And um, as I said, I think earlier, I've got that Christmas competition coming up, so you're not going to want to miss that as well. So, yeah, thanks again for watching, guys. And if I catch another fish, I'll obviously show you that. So make sure you watch till the end, because sometimes we do get one at the last knock-ins. Um, but yeah, if, if not, I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next video.